Hello again, it's Alan Prost here, and I'm just continuing on our series of uh, PowerPoint presentations on Module 4 in the course of RESP220, and today we're going to talk about volume support ventilation. All right, so this is a spontaneous mode of ventilation, so CSV, and it's using volume as its control mechanism. So let's take a look at how this mode actually works. All right. It's got a lot in common with pressure support in, in the fact that it's just there to augment the inspiratory effort um, of a spontaneous breathing patient. All right. It's considered an, an adaptive mode of pressure control. It's very similar to that. Volume support cannot be ag combined with modes like SIMV. It's meant to work um, on its own. It's uh, like pressure regulated volume control in that it delivers a... Um, in that, a pressure limited but volume targeted mode all right so it's different about pressure support is that we establish a volume target for our patients with this mode it's similar to pressure support but it's got the addition of this volume target and what it actually does is it varies the level of pressure support to meet this volume target with our patient all right so it adjusts breath by breath to help maintain a targeted tidal volume and it does that by increasing or decreasing the level of pressure support so think of it as being very similar to pressure regulated volume control, but it's there for spontaneous supported breaths. Again, all the pressure, all the breaths in this mode are spontaneous, so they're patient triggered and patient cycled, just like with pressure support. The difference being that they have a tidal volume target, and it's guaranteed over several breaths. So one breath might be a little low, one might be a little high. It's going to be um, um, vary maybe from breath to breath. But overall, if you looked at 20 breaths or breaths over um, several minutes, the, the uh, volume target will be maintained. So the patient still determines the respiratory rate and their inspiratory time. They'll certainly um, um, be able to control all aspects of their spontaneous breathing. And some people call it a, a, a self-weaning mode in that if the patient is uh, capable and doing a lot of work of breathing, the ventilator will actually decrease the level of support just like pressure-regulated volume control. So if the patient's taking big breaths in and the, vital, the uh, tidal volume target is being met, the ventilator will actually step down the level of pressure support into just very minimal levels. So it can be considered a self-weaning mode. All right. Some of the disadvantages are, like pressure support ventilation, there's no backup. So we can set alarms to capture those apneic periods or if a patient's um, minute ventilation does decrease below a preset volume or even the tidal volumes uh, become too high or too low, there are alarm settings and they're very important to be set correctly. All right. Key thing about this mode, as patient demand increases, the ventilatory support decreases. All right. So as the patient takes big breaths in and is capable of taking those large tidal volumes, the amount of ventilatory support decreases. Now this can be advantageous when we're thinking about utilizing this for that self-weaning, but it can be detrimental if the patient's increasing the work of breathing beyond what we'd like them to do because they may be able to tolerate that work of breathing for a period of time and then may succumb to being tired or even going apneic. All right. So it can be a good thing when they're capable, but it may be a negative if we don't want them doing that work of breathing. All right. So it's difficult to do to visualize this until you've actually tried breathing on the mode. The trigger, of course, it can be patient only. So it's going to be to flow or to pressure. If the patient goes apneic, the ventilator doesn't do anything. It's pressure limited, just like pressure support, but now we've added the volume target. So the pressure support will be increased or decreased depending on the inspiratory effort of the patient. And remember, it's kind of inverse. If the patient actually takes a large breath in and does a lot of work, the pressure support level will decrease. And if the patient is just takes a, does a small amount of work and just triggers the breath basically and doesn't do very much work, the level of pressure support will increase. All right. It's going to be flow cycled, and that's what makes this mode like pressure support. And the flow cycling, actually, as the patient takes a big breath in and the flow declines, so patient's going along, takes a big breath in, has a large inspiratory flow, and then it declines. Once it gets to a certain point, the ventilator cycles into exhalation, and that's what makes this a nice, comfortable, spontaneous mode, just like pressure support. 
All right. So we set our tidal volume target, and quite often it's modest. There may be five or six hundred mils, some kind of physiological normal that we would expect our patient to achieve. All right. The pressure support will vary breath by breath to achieve this. All right. So if we have decreased um, inspiratory effort by the patient, that will cause it to have increased the pressure support level. All right. If we have a patient who's capable and has increased inspiratory effort or flows, the pressure support level will decrease. All right. So you got to keep those two very separate. All right. Of course, we're going to set a level of PEEP and FiO2, and like always, we're going to set the sensitivity on the ventilator correctly. So volume support looks very much like pressure support. All right. In fact, if we when we graph it out like this, we can't I can't demonstrate for you any differences. Right. We are of course patient triggered. We've got to meet our pressure control or pressure support level. All right. Better to think of it as the pressure support level. The inspiratory flow will um, is controlled by the patient. All right. So they initiate some inspiratory flow, and once it declines to a certain point, and in some ventilators we can choose that level of decline. Right? often to 25% of the peak inspiratory flow, then the ventilator cycles into exhalation. All right? So it's this decline in inspiratory flow. Right? That's what we call it a flow cycling mode. All right? Now, where the difference from pressure support comes in is that the ventilator is smart enough to be looking for our volume target, all right? or tidal volume. If the patient is making very little inspiratory effort and requires additional pressure support, the ventilator will increase the pressure support or decrease the pressure support level to maintain this tidal volume, this targeted tidal volume. All right. What's a little bit unusual about that is that when the patient is doing a, a high work of breathing, when they're taking that big breath in, the pressure support level will actually be turned down. When they have a, when they're just barely doing any work and they're just triggering the ventilator, the pressure support level will increase. So it's not um, as you might think as intuitive as as uh, as it might be. All right, that's why we consider it a kind of a self-weaning mode. If the patient's capable of doing their work of breathing, the pressure support declines and the patient is basically um, breathing on their own. All right. So this mode is a great mode. It's very comfortable for patients, just um, just like pressure support. But we have the advantage of that volume target, and uh, that target is very useful to us because if we have a patient who's um, just starting um, to come um, spontaneously breathe after maybe a prolonged period on the ventilator, this volume target assures that. Um, we're going to be meeting our minute ventilation requirements. And that's a, a, a huge difference over regular pressure support where we have no control over the um, tidal volume. Now, with regular pressure support, we'd set alarm limits. So if the tidal volume went too low, we would be alarmed and we'd know to turn it up. But in this case, right, the ventilator will be thinking about whether I need to increase the pressure support or decrease the pressure support level to achieve this volume target. All right. Now, if the patient's capable and is able to do the work of breathing, the pressure support level will be decreased and the patient will be spontaneously breathing. If they're incapable of doing that and they have little inspiratory effort, then the pressure support level will be increased until the volume target is met. So that's the big difference between volume support as compared to regular pressure support is that we've got this volume target. Thank you very much.